let's pray father we thank you for a whole new session of studies which is very very important we ask that you give us your inspiring spirit for us to comprehend your word in jesus name amen ladies and gentlemen we are done and dusted with the call to leave the cities and i pray we are all going to prayerfully seek the face of the lord so that he can direct us to the right location it is very important and then we can do the necessary preparations um in the future discussions we are going to do um talk about certain preparations some practical preparations that we all need to understand and know we are going to study that we are going to study that we're going to talk about some very practical things that we all need to do for example food clothing shelter water first aid equipment and the, 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 the application of natural remedies we are going to study all these things at the right time so that we get to know and understand all these issues now today we are going to begin another series and i believe it's going to take about three sub sub um, episodes and i believe that god is going to help us to understand this now in the course of our discussions our previous discussion we did talk about 1888 and as it parallels with um, um, AD 66, the call to leave the cities. And I want us to find time to discuss the issue of 1888 because it is so parallel with also the Exodus movement. It is so, so parallel. And as we've been saying, let's find time to study for ourselves and try to get the parallels because they help us to know the events they help us to know where we are to move and what we are to do because so many things have happened in the past which are also manifesting themselves in the future so our discussion today is entitled parallels 1888 kadesh bania 1888 and kadesh bania kadesh bania has so much significance to our time and Kadesh Barnia is so much parallel with what the events in 1888 and that is what we are going to talk about parallels Kadesh Barnia 1888 so we are our key text is found in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11 now all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come the events of the past were written as examples they were written for admonitions for each one of us so it, by a careful study of the past events you'll be able to detect whatever is to happen because type always meets anti-type and that is the beauty of the word of god in eight testimonies page 307 we are told there is the study in history that is not to be condemned sacred history was one of the studies in the schools of the prophets i believe you know the schools of the prophets established by prophet samuel in the record of his dealings with nations were traced the footsteps of jehovah so today we are to consider the dealings of god with the nations of the earth we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy to study the workings of providence in the great reformatory movement and to understand the progress of events in the marshalling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy and these things are happening right before our eyes how nations are being marshalled for the final conflict of the great controversy and so in four manuscript releases in page 163 we are told we should study the great way marks that point out the times in which we are living we should study gradually most of us have become dependent beings sit up and study ladies and gentlemen we are all to do that and we are to avoid complacency and all-knowing spirit and begin to in the spirit of humility do a thorough and a diligent study into the bible and sacred history and prophecy so that we'll be able to point out the times in which we are living in seven testimonies page 14 we are told those who place themselves under god's control 
to be led and guided by him will do what will catch the steady thread of the events ordained by him to take place out of sabi nyanko pon she dan ko fe ni pe bi se we mu mum na me kasa wo no the key is this place yourself under god's control and do what and steady and by the grace of god you catch the steady thread of the events and this is the problem why we are seeing so conflicting arguments all over let us place ourselves under god's control and stop depending upon the lives of people now the question is that as i said 1888 kadesh bani and we've said that 1888 was a call to god's people but what has kadesh bani got to do with it there is a connection in the history of ancient israel and the advent movement there is so much parallel that we need to study for ourselves and we will see in four testimonies page 27 paragraph 2 we are told there is a great similarity between our history that is the advent movement the adventist and that of the children of israel great similarity let's see how great controversy puts it great controversy page 457 paragraph 1 the history of ancient israel is a striking illustration of the past experience of the adventist body you see that we have so much in common there are so much parallels that we need to study and understand and these parallels in this discussion will help us to catch the devil's tactics to catch the devil's deception ah we have been repeatedly talking about but our people cannot get it these parallels will help us catch it in the name of god now first question we talk of israel israel where were they and for what reason did god call them out of egypt where were they and for what reason did god call them in exodus chapter 3 verse 8 we are told and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians they were in bondage in egypt and for what reason in isaiah chapter 49 verse 6 i will also give thee for a light to the gentiles so god called israel out of darkness out of egypt out of bondage to make them a light to the world that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth so that is the reason for which israel was called now if there is a striking similarity between israel and the adventist israel was called out of egypt the question is that where were the adventist where were they if israel were in egypt then where were the adventist The answer is found in 5 testimonies page 455 paragraph 2. God has called his church in this day, you see? Israel was called. Adventist called. God has called his church in this day as he called ancient Israel. You see how he builds the parallels. And that is the beauty of typology, the beauty of parallels. So he called Israel out of Egypt and then he calls his church in the end time. God has called his church in this day as he called ancient Israel to stand as a light in the earth. I believe you remember Isaiah 49 verse 6 as I said. Isaiah 49 verse 6 to give thee as a light. So as Israel became a light to the world, the Adventists have also become or did also become a light to the world as he called ancient Israel to stand as light to the earth. Listen. By the mighty cleaver of truth, the messages of the first second and third angels he has separated them from the churches so where were the adventists called they were called from the churches that existed at that time the protestant churches the evangelical churches basically in the united states of america these those those were the churches those were the places symbolical egypt that god called the adventist church and for what reason were they called the testimony say as he called ancient israel to stand as a light in the earth by the mighty cleaver of truth the message of the first second and third angels he has separated them from the churches and from the world to bring them into a sacred nearness to himself sacred nearness to himself so 
in great controversy, page 457, paragraph 1, we are told, God led his people in the Advent movement, even as he led the children of Israel from Egypt. You see? So Israel from Egypt, God led them. And the Advent movement from the churches, God also led them. Now, the next question. What promise did God give to ancient Israel when he called them? And he called them out of Egypt. What did he tell them? The answer is very simple. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. So there was a promise of Canaan. God promised them Canaan. So he took them out of Egypt and he was to lead them to Canaan. So what promise or message? When God called also his people out of the churches in 1844 especially specifically what message or promise did God give them after he had also separated them right after 1844 God gave us a message and that message is in Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 to 12 but for the purpose of time let me limit myself to Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 to 12 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his heart the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment that sendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest no day who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of of Jesus. So God called Israel. He gave them a promise to inherit earthly Canaan. God calls the Adventist church. He gave them a message to give to the world, to prepare the world for the second advent of Christ into heavenly Canaan. This was a promise. This was a message to be given to the world. So that is exactly what was given. Now in great controversy, page 455, paragraph 2, we are told, He has made them the depositaries of His law and has committed to them the great truth of prophecy for this time. Like the oracles committed to ancient Israel, these are a sacred trust to be communicated to the world. So God called Israel Adventists. He gave them a message to give to the world. The three angels of Revelation 14 represent the people who accept the light of God's messages and go forth as his agents to sound the warning throughout the length and breadth of the earth. Hallelujah. So God calls his people. He gives them the message to be given to the world. So he gives them the three angels' message, especially the third angel. But the third angel has something unique about it. What is that? It is called the right arm. Oh, Johnny Frimwa, and ye ye. Ye Johnny Frimwa, and ye ye. In Review and Herald, June 20, 1899, paragraph 10, we are told the Lord desires his church to be a perfect body. Not all arms, not all body without arms, but body and arms together. And every member working as a part of the one great whole, as the right arm is connected with the body. So the health reform and medical missionary work is connected with the third angel's message and is to work efficiently as the right arm for the defense of the body of truth. What shields and protects the third angel's message? It is the medical missionary work. And in our subsequent discussion, we are going to understand why. And why the devil is busily applying the right arm, his counterfeit right arm. Because the right arm is to protect the body. The body is the third angel's message. And the right arm has something to do with the body. It is how you treat the body. And the devil is also, also using his right arm. In other words, he is destroying our bodies with his vaccines. And we are seeing reports. So this image tells us the nature of the message that when God called and separated the church of God from the churches, this is what he gave us. So, when God called Israel, what was their destination? I think I've already said it. And let me repeat in Exodus chapter 3 verse 8. To bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites. So, from Egypt, to Canaan. What was the destination? 
What is the destination of God's people? After he has separated us from the world? Heavenly Canaan. Now the question is that. God picked Israel. He gives them a promise. Go and inherit Canaan. And then Israel leads with Moses as their leader. And then right after two years time, Israel got settled in a place called Kadesh Barnea. And that is the point of our discussion today. Kadesh Barnea. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 2, there are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. Verse 5. On this side Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law saying, verse 6, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough on this mount, verse 7, Turn you, and take our journey, your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates, verse 8, Let's see. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. So Israel moved from Egypt to Kadesh. And Kadesh was the border. So they were just on the verge of entering Canaan. As God has promised in Exodus chapter 3 verse 8. And what happened? Disappointment. They could not enter in. Moses sends 12 spies. We know the story. And the spies came and they gave a beautiful report. Now, our question today is that why did Israel fail to enter Canaan when they immediately arrived at the border? When God had promised to take them out of Egypt through the wilderness to Canaan, why did they fail to enter? This is the question that we have to answer. In Great Controversy, page 457 and 456, we are told, it was not the will of God that Israel should wander 40 years in the wilderness from Egypt and all the miracles to Kadesh was approximately two years. But we know the history of Israel that they took 40 years. So what happened? Exactly two years they were on the border. Why could they not enter? This is the reason. It was not the will of God that Israel should wander 40 years in the wilderness. He desired to lead them directly to the land of Canaan and establish them there. A holy, happy people. But what happened? Let's see. But they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19. Why did they fail to enter? Unbelief. Our question is that. At what point in history, because there is a strong similarity between the history of ancient Israel and the history of Adventists. So God calls Israel right from the start in Egypt to lead them to Canaan. And when they moved, they got to Kadesh Barnea, the border, and something happened. Unbelief, and they had to go back to the wilderness and wander for 40 years. When God called the Adventists in 1844, he picked up his people to lead them to proclaim the final message to the world and to prepare the world for the second advent of Christ. At a particular point in history, the Adventists were also in Kadesh Barnea. That is antitypical Kadesh Barnea. And something interesting also happened. But the question is that, at what point in history did Adventists also get to the borders of heavenly Canaan? At what point? In 1888. And that is the caption, parallels, Kadesh Barnea, 1888. So as Israel settled on the border, Kadesh Barnea, in 1888, the seven-day Adventist church had also, and the world at large, had got into Kadesh Barnea. The border, that is to say, Christ was just about coming. In Great Controversy, page 457 and 458, 456, we are told, in like manner, it was not the will of God that the coming of Christ should be so long delayed and his people should remain so many years in this world of sin and sorrow. But unbelief separated them from God. What happened that Israel could not enter Canaan in, 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 immediately when they go, go to the border? Unbelief. What happened in 1888 that God's people could not proclaim the final message and prepare the world for the second advent of Christ? 
unbelief. Same unbelief. Same unbelief. In Great Controversy, page 457, paragraph 1. If all who had labored unitedly in the work of, in 1844, you see? The movement began in 1844. The Exodus movement began right from Egypt. So here in 1844, if all who had labored unitedly in the work in 1844 had received the third angel's message, you see? The third angel's message. And we have said it has a unique feature. It has the right arm. And proclaimed it in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts. A flood of light would have been shed upon the world. Years ago, the inhabitants of the earth would have been warned. The closing were completed. And Christ would have come for the redemption of his people. So, as in Kadesh Barnea, Israel had gotten to the border and was about to enter. In 1888, the whole world was ready for the second advent of Christ. But what happened to Israel that they couldn't enter? Unbelief. What happened to Adventists that they couldn't proclaim the message? Unbelief. So therefore, unbelief set in, was, was in there in Kadesh Barnea. Unbelief was in there in 1888. And this tells us that the history of ancient Israel and the Adventists is very, very similar and identical. Here they were given a promise. In Adventists, they were given a message. Unbelief in Kadesh Barnea. Unbelief in 1888. So the question that we are going to ask is that, what were the prevailing circumstances that propelled the spirit of unbelief among ancient Israel and the spirit of unbelief among Adventists? We are in to see certain very interesting developments that occurred during those times. And as we build these parallels, we'll be able to detect so many deceptions. We'll be able to know the times in which we live so that we can prepare and prepare and prepare for the soon advent of Christ. May God help us as we prepare for the next episode. In Jesus' name, Amen.